on behalf of my crew, I would like to welcome all of you on board our flight SQ-232, service bound for Singapore. Flight time today is 7 hours and 35 minutes. Good morning and welcome back to another video. This is a continuation of the last video. I have just landed in Sydney from that Auckland to Sydney flight with Air New Zealand. And in this video, we're going to continue on to Singapore with Singapore Airlines. And this is the first time I'll be flying with Singapore Airlines, so I'm excited to try and experience a new airline. The flight is set to depart at 12.25, so we have about some, uh, an hour and some change to kill before we jump on board. So uh, I'm already in the terminal since I just had to transfer through. So come, on, come along and let's enjoy the sights and the service of Singapore Airlines as we go from A to B. Pier C of Terminal 1, used by Star Alliance members, Virgin Australia and Delta, is the starting point for our second flight of the day. As far as transferring to international flights is concerned, it was an easy process, no more than 10 minutes after stepping off my initial flight from Auckland and passing through security once more. Gateside, I thought the spacious open area, with a variety of seating surrounded by shops and eateries, in the center of the pier is a nice and inviting feature of the terminal. I couldn't enjoy the terminal for too long, however, we didn't have too much time between flights. But for my few moments I was in Australia, I thought I'd pick up some essentials. Alright, so I just made it to the gate and today we're at gate 59. And uh, yeah, within the time I was able to go to the store, pick up some chips and uh, some kangaroo jerky. So I'm going to try that on the plane to see how good that is. I'm pretty excited about that. But uh, yeah, the boarding already started, so probably in 10 minutes we'll jump on board and continue on our way to Singapore. Today we're in row 64, in the rear of the aircraft. We departed a bit late due to some bags having to be removed from the plane, but that gave me the opportunity to try these bad boys out. And how were they? Not too shabby. Currently Singapore Airlines has 69 A350s in their fleet. Aircraft are configured with one of three seating arrangements. Our three-year-old aircraft has the medium haul configuration, easily identifiable as it lacks a premium economy cabin. There are 304 seats in the two classes, with nine laboratories on board. Our seven and a half hour flight would take us northwest across Australia, then over the Java Sea and Indonesia into Singapore. The economy cabin is laid out in a 333 seating configuration with a nice soft blue LED glow for the duration of the flight. The dark seat backs are balanced with the Singapore Airline Blue. Do note that if you are seated in a bulkhead row, that the IFE displays are affixed rather high on the bulkheads. The alternating blue and grey seats are very comfortable, probably the second best economy seat I've experienced. Japan Airlines Sky Wider seat remains the number one title. The headrest can move and pivot smoothly, and like the seat, very comfortable. Seatback contains a coat hook off to the side. At the top sits the 11.1 inch adjustable display, and we'll take a peek at the IFE in a few moments. Below is a little pocket and a cup holder so you don't have to have the tray table down for the whole time just for a drink. Under the seat back table is a pocket which has the Chris Shop catalog, Wi Fi connection guide, and safety card. And I like how there are a few smaller pockets so you can organize your personal items. 
The 32-inch seat pitch provides a nice amount of space for an economy seat, and between is a power outlet. Each seat had a blanket and pillow for guests at the time of boarding, though I didn't need a blanket for this daytime flight as I felt the cabin to be in that Goldilocks zone. And above is the reading light. Overall, I was pleased with the hard product. The seat had been well thought out for long haul economy travel, and I was quite content with the seat for the 8 hours, and I imagine you would be too. Singapore Airlines offers Wi-Fi on all its aircraft except for their 737s. Free Wi-Fi will depend on your booking class or whether you're a Chris Flyer member or not. Price plans for 1 or 3 hours or the full flight priced in US dollars don't look unreasonable. I didn't purchase Wi-Fi on this flight, I was too busy taking in the views of Australia from the air, so I can't comment on the speed or its reliability. But as we continue to fly over Australia, I invite new viewers to subscribe for continued travel and aviation related content. Alright, time for one of my favorite parts about any flight, the meal service. And we start by setting up the tray table, which is folded in half to save space. The mirror provided is a nice feature and you can adjust the table to your preference. About 30 minutes after we took off, a salty snack was handed out followed by a drink and I went with Tiger Beer. The menu is available via the QR code and by connecting to the plane's Wi-Fi. And these are the three options for today's flight. And I went with, drum roll please, lemon chicken and fried rice. It was okay, not good, not bad. The dish was missing something to brighten it up. A small salad or some steamed vegetables would complement the chicken and rice. And here's a look at the beef stew. I was happy I went with the chicken. Ice cream bars were handed out soon after, and maybe a bit too soon. As you can see, I was about one fourth through the meal. So I felt a bit rushed as ice cream is, long story short, time sensitive. Now let's enjoy the outstanding views of Australia and Southeast Asia. The in-flight entertainment is provided via the generous 11.1 inch touch display. Important buttons are located below the touch screen rather than part of the interface. There is an almost endless selection of content from all corners of the globe. I was content with the moving map and watching the darkest hour. Good movie and explains how airports which straddle the US Canada border played a part in the war effort. And a fun fact of the moving maps is that they also illustrate night and day, and the separation curve continuously alters. Since we're a few days before the equinox, the curve separating night and day is practically a vertical line, rather than a sinusoidal function. And here's a quick look at one of the lavatories. It had soft lighting and was kept clean throughout the flight. There was some hand lotion and toiletries such as toothbrushes available. With the last 90 minutes to go, the refreshment was handed out, 
and I went with the chicken roti. It tasted fine, but I thought it was a little too greasy and no wet towels were handed out with it, making things a bit uncomfortable. Overall, it was a nice flight. The seat and eye fee was excellent for a long haul economy product, but I think there can be improvements in the economy class catering. Also, I do have to point out that I don't believe the seat was as clean as it could have been, especially given the past three years. There were coffee stains around the cup holder and splatter marks on the shades. The guy beside us had to get his table cleaned before that first snack service as well. And I mentioned this not to nitpick, but as Singapore Airlines is regarded as one of the best airlines in the world and they have a very good image, I'm not sure if that cleanliness which I experienced this flight is a reflection of that image. And I'm here through my videos to give you an accurate reflection of my flights and experiences. This was the second of a three flight one way trip from Auckland to Tokyo. The price of this one way itinerary came out to 1148 New Zealand dollars. Also I offset 405 kilograms of CO2 for this flight. All right, so that's the Singapore Airlines flight from Sydney to Auckland and overall it was a nice eight hour flight. Uh, I actually liked the seat. The seat was very comfortable and the headrest was probably one of the more comfortable ones that I've experienced thus far. Uh, and I liked how they designed the seat back as well. Large screen was great to watch a couple movies throughout the flight. And uh, the table folds in half, has a mirror there and the little cup holder. So they really thought of a lot of things when they made the seat. And the food was good too, nothing really to write home about. And uh, that last meal, uh, I thought it was a little bit too greasy uh, for an airplane, especially if there's no oshibori or wet wipes or whatever you call wet paper towels are they just wet wipes I, I don't know them, <laughs> how you want to call it but uh, other than that it was a great flight over eight hours and uh, now we're in Singapore so thanks for watching uh, let me know what you thought about uh, Singapore Airlines economy class uh, and I'll catch you in the next episode